Okay, I found the update. So here is the city update, which I will email to you or have emailed to you. Um, Beaverton Winter Lights is happening. And so there will be a small, brief 30 minute uh, in person tree lighting on Friday at 5 30 p.m. So it'll go from 5 30 to 6. If you can't uh, be there in person, you can also watch it. We're going to live stream it on Facebook. And if you Google Beaverton Winter Lights or go to www.beavertonoregon.gov forward slash winter lights, it will take you to a website where you can find that link. Um, and the lights are going to be on around the city in the round in City Park um, and near the library for from 4 p.m. till 8 a.m. every night from um, December 4th through January 6th. And there's also lights and stuff downtown too. They've done a nice, nice job of downtown Beaverton decorating as well. Um, and there's a website redesign happening in the city and they would like some feedback from community members about your experiences with using the current website and to know what it is that you would hope for improvements and what you're looking for and how you interact with the website. So the email will have the link to that survey in it as well. I think it's about a five minute survey. And if you can take five minutes and take that, we would really appreciate your feedback. That would help us to make it better for the community um, and for us to be able to interact with you. And we're hoping to launch it sometime in 2022. And um, COVID, we're still reminding you to get vaccinated, get your boosters, wear your masks, all of the good things that are helping us to decline in our COVID rates. And they are declining, and so that's excellent. And then the um, City Hall is also open again, so feel free to stop by. And that is it. That was brief for this week. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Any questions about all of that? All right, so then the minutes were sent out uh, just a little while ago. So I'll give everyone a moment to look those over and see if they have any changes they'd like to, to make before we vote on. I had a question. So is Scott our youth liaison from the Mayor's Youth Advisory Board? Like, is it official? Yes. It's official. Excellent. <laughs> Unless he says no right now, it's like never mind. <laughs> I don't think I don't think he ha technically has a vote. I think we just appointed him. Okay, you're stuck with us, Scott. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. So, if folks have a chance to look them over, maybe we're still reading. I'll I'll give you a minute or two. We do read them internally, Christina, too. So like staff reads them, Nathan reads them. <laughs> they are read, I just don't know if people externally are reading them. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're very helpful for staff. Reading a historical record. Yes. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Well, there's the legal aspect too, yeah. Uh, that too, I guess. Although that is something to consider now that we've been doing Zoom meetings, like do we need to have the written record if we have it videotaped? Brian I mean, is I guess all of this, very yes. <laughs> I know all of the uh, you know city council meetings are televised and I know that the recorder has to do those too, so. Yeah, I think the videos are scrubbed after a certain amount of time. And I think that the written records last longer, I think. Horace chapter 192, gotta do it. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Yep. There you go. <laughs> There's no Zoom chat at the end. Was there, did we just not have one? Um, I will get that one. We okay. don't approve or disprove the Zoom chat. We just have to put in what was there. 
So I will add those in there. And we will eventually get the videos up, but the person who does that typically has been on family medical leave. So it's, we, we're backlogged on getting those up on the web now. They'll be there at some point. All right, so uh, anyone have any changes they wanna to make to the minutes before we go forward? Nope, all right, is there a motion to approve? I motion to approve them, but with the addition of the the Zoom chat when which we know is going to be there, but explicitly I'd like to state that. All right. Is there a second? I second. All right. Is anyone opposed to that? Nope. All right. We're approved. Next, visioning updates. What's going on? All right. I guess I can give a little bit of an update on what I've been up to. Um, so this past month has been a really good month for being able to start some of that outreach. So I thank you all for um, participating in last month's meeting as well as um, responding to um, responding to the survey that I sent out um, to be able to kind of just coordinate when we want to be able to do a retreat, what kinds of um, participation you would like to be involved with um, later on. Um, but the big things that I've been working on kind of been across the board. We've been starting to coordinate with some of our consultants that we want to work with, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But we have a um, couple of consultants that we're weighing um, right now to be able to do some focus group work with us. Um, Brian, you didn't get the survey. Oh, I sent it out to the group. Shoot. Um, I, I might have. I'll have to double check to make sure that you're on that email list. So you should be on that email list. But um, it would have been right after last month's meeting. Um, if you're copy pasting my email list, I always add Brian separately. Everybody that, has to be PC'd except him. I very much apologize, Brian. That might have been what happened. <laughs> I just thought you hated me and did not want to take my survey. <laughs> no, <laughs> no hate. Uh, no hate. <laughs> I thought he was volunteering for all three committees. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I will also send that back out to you, Brian, just so you can have a quick response to it. Uh, we don't really need those committees right at this moment, but we will need them later. So it'd be good to have your name on, on some of those. Um, but yeah, like, like I was saying, we've been reaching out to consultants. We've got a couple people um, targeted potentially to do um, outreach to some of our um, communities across um, Beaverton and do some uh, intentional focus groups um, with, with key community or with um, various um various communities in Beaverton. And as well as we have a, like, like I had mentioned last time, we have a graphic designer um, who will be helping us with some of the marketing that we will be doing. So the bulk of today's meeting, I would like to spend um, kind of talking through what we'd like to see in the marketing. And as we move things forward, we will have to rely more on our marketing committee um, to be able to bring that um, together. Additionally, I've been meeting with a lot of the staff to be able to help figure out what kinds of questions make sense for them going forward for us to be able to put into a second round of a survey as well as what we should be asking the focus groups as well. Um, okay, Amy is asking, we did not have back members involving, involved in drafting um, the request for proposal to consultants. Um, we, haven't, we haven't done that yet. We haven't actually formally um, hired any of these consultants yet. So um, we, can, we can try to pull in back members as we actually um, create a contract with them. Um, but what we're looking at right now is we're kind of, we're just doing some initial interviews with folks to be able to see who might be able to do some of that facilitation and who already has some of the integration with some of those communities to be able to do those focus groups. Um, I think the core things we want to be able to make sure we're doing is that we are valuing people's time and, um, paying folks to be able to participate in this. Um, so we can get as, uh, wide and diverse as a group as possible. Um, but, um, we okay, have... Nathan. Yes. Yeah, from that point of view, uh, is there a possibility of getting multiple consultants so that we can access multiple communities? There is that possibility, yes. We have a couple names okay. listed out right now. Um, I will, once we get a little bit further along, um, we will um, get, we'll, we'll give you those names. Um, but we're right now just kind of in introductory meetings with them um, to be able to see if they have the time and willingness to do it. We're kind of on a tighter schedule to be able to get those focus groups in. Granted, uh, I'm of the opinion that if we have to even get those in later with to fit um, the schedule of 
those communities or the the consultant that we work with, then uh, we should still do it because I think it's really important that we get those focus groups in. Um, so along, so we're getting that done. Um, let's see what else do I have to say. We have we're on the schedule now to work with the diversity advisory board. Um, BCCI and Climate Action in December to be able to talk through them what they would like to be able to see within some of our survey tools. And um, currently we have a little bit of a draft of a survey and focus, and focus group questions. We'll have more um, formalized questions by January for you all to look at so you guys can have a filter and a say on that as well. Um, but right now we're just kind of going through some of these groups to be able to see um, what kinds of priorities need to be in there and what makes sense with what's already going on in the community. Um, uh, I guess another big thing that we have going on, we uh, are going to be speaking with the city council next week. Um, if you want to listen into the city council meeting, um, city council was requesting more information on what the results of the initial snapshot survey are. Um, you know, we've kind of run through that, you know, they need to be taken with a grain of salt, but they kind of comport with what we've seen with previous community surveys. Um, they are going into a process of um, doing some council priorities. And so we want to include our research as well as what the VAC is going to be doing. So hopefully, you know, they can make priorities based on what work the VAC has done already, um, as well as knowing that we are going to be going through a more intense and more um, rigorous um, data collection process. Um, and so, so those are the big things that I've been working on, but I did want to make sure um, we sent some thank yous out. Um, there are a couple people who are not here anymore, but um, <laughs> we will be sending out thank yous to both Wade and Sarah, who are, have both retired from the board this year. We appreciate their time. Um, Brian, we'd like to thank you for the good time that you have spent as chair, and hopefully you won't be, uh, if, since you're so busy, you'll be able to retire from that position next year. And Christina, thank you so much for the amount of time that you spend writing all of our notes. Um, we, we really do appreciate having those. And since we have to legally, says Brian, um, we really, we really, it's important that uh, we have such a good recorder. So I really thank you. Um, and along those lines, I mean, we won't see a lot of you until after the new year. Um, so big thanks to all of you for participating in the board. We're so very grateful that you can be a part of um, all of this. And um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to have a job here if it wasn't for all of you. So um, mm -hmm. thank you all for your time here. Um, so, so those are my big updates. Rachel, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the, the update that will be provided to council. Uh, I know like we've talked about, um, you know, things like, for example, like interest in public safety has been like highly rated, but like it's hard to understand, like, does that like, there's a lot about public safety that's kind of like embedded in there that can mean people may believe that like for them they really want to see police reform other people may want to see like more police some people may want to see less police right so for, and like that's that's not even counting like other emergency services for example so will that kind of um uh context be provided to the update to council yeah, so I think the okay. big thing I want to be able to do with the council update is put take a salt shaker and just like, you know, tell them <laughs> everything comes with a lot of context. We can't just assume that just because we heard public safety, there's multiple sides to that coin of when we when that things were either coded or told that they were important in terms of public safety. And so I think what I want to be able to get across to them is we got a lot of good information from the first survey. Um, we heard what kinds of things were important, um, but we barely scratched the surface in terms of knowing what exactly the community wants. And, um, you know, the, there are good tools that have, we've gone out and we've researched and we've heard things, um, but there's multiple sides to each of these perspectives and we encourage the council as they go in to set their priorities for the coming year um, to keep that in mind when they're using these pieces of data. Um, cool. and, and that we hope that through this process, we'll be able to kind of clarify what those sides of the coins are and where the city wants to go. Great, thank you. Christina, you got your hand up. I have a few questions. The first was last meeting, we asked who the designer was that uh, the city has worked with on previous marketing campaigns. Cause I'm guessing that that's one of the consultants that you've been talking with. And you had said that you would let us know this meeting. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I'll punt this for a little bit. We will be talking about this at length um, later on. So, um, okay. And then my other question um, was regarding the council presentation. So, is Brian going to be doing that with you, or is it just you? Currently, um, it's just me. Brian, you're welcome okay. to join. We have about, I think it's like five to ten minutes. We have a very short timeline to be able to actually present, so it's not going to be a lot. So okay. I guess the things I will say, the, the presentation will be partially snapshot, but it'll be partially talking about the timeline and some of the debate that's been over the timeline. So there's going to be a two-sided perspective, and I'm going to be including actually, Brian, um, one of the slides that you had proposed from last, I think it was January or March, um, when you had presented in front of council. Um, so I hope that's okay with you, Brian. Great. Yeah, that, that, that was that was one of my big concerns is because that's come up several times. And, um, you know, even Councillor Fagan noted that he hadn't heard anything about this June 30th mm. deadline um, for the process. And so um, I just want to make sure that that's like front and center, that that timeline and, and the fact that the VAC really wants to keep with our initial plan that we had come up with earlier in the year. And then the other thing about the Zen City snapshot, snapshot survey is we still haven't seen the raw data or the actual summary that they've provided or mm -hmm. um, the graphs, like those haven't been shared with the VAC. And so I'm wondering if you're gonna have something that's more tangible from that consultant because we, we haven't been able to see that as a group other than just the slides that you, the few slides that, that you've shared with us in the last few meetings. So I'm just wondering if they've given you a more comprehensive report or if it's still just those, that, that little bit yeah. of data. Yeah, I will, uh, they've, been, they've been slow to respond this past month. I will send them a follow-up email. We do have a draft report. I think it's probably the point that I can probably send you the draft report. I, I will, I'll double check with them, make sure that they don't have any problem with that. But um, yeah, I would prefer to give that to you because it's been slow for them to be able to make. We asked for a few changes in the way that they had done things and the way that they had like kind of formatted the report um, and they have yet to get that back to us. So I'll, I'll push them and then if I don't hear back from them, I think I'll just go ahead and give you guys the draft report because it's, it's kind of ridiculous how long it's taking to make it. And that, that's, that's been my concern is it's like, so is the council gonna see something that we haven't even seen yet um, and that we've been asking for. And then also yeah. if we're planning to work with them on the more in-depth survey, seeing what their turnaround time has been, hasn't been super impressive this first round. So yeah, um, no, and the, that would the work with our accelerated timeline. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the, the council will not be saying anything that you haven't seen. It's all the same <laughs> graphs and information that you guys have seen. Um, Great. But um, yeah, I will, I, we got we got to push this city to move faster. So. Yeah, Suba, what did you have your hand up? Yeah, um, so um, just going off on uh, what Christina was just asking you, do you have any more information on where that the deadline came from, like how it got pushed up six months? Um, you know, where that date, the new date came from? Because even uh, Councillor Fagan was unaware of that, like she said. The, the best I can take from it is it's how long I think I think there was some confusion um, amongst the staff. I, I, I can't Shannon might be able to speak to this better, but um, I think there was initially 18 months from when the presentation was given was the number that had been told from people. So the assumption was from January 2021, 18 months into the future from there. I don't necessarily know who made that assumption, but I think that's that's the presentation was in May. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know how January 2021 would have been thrown out there. Can't really mm -hmm. tell you. And I think a little bit probably of it too is where budgeted time for my position runs out currently. Um, there's been some talk about flexibility for um, at least my position, but you know we will be getting getting out you know what you had shown to them in May um, in, in front of city council for the next meeting. So my, my thought, I think this is kind of what Christina was saying earlier too, is um, my thought is given the data that we're going to present to them, there really isn't much um, actionable for the for them 
right now other than the single most important thing which is the deadline being june versus the end of the year and um, how it might be artificially tied to um, the deadline of um, your employment somehow so that yeah. it, i think that's the one thing they can do something about right now and so that, that's probably something that should be brought up yeah. well, well we'll see what they how they respond um, we got through the door basically onto the council because they were interested in the snapchat survey so we're using mm -hmm. this opportunity the best we can to okay. talk to them through some of the things that are on our minds so yeah. all right i think that's the bulk of my update where are we at in terms of oh Actually, it is not the bulk of my update. There are a couple other things. We will have new members coming next year. Um, so I'm excited to say that our new members will include the wonderful Christina Lentz, who is here with us. Um, she will be a brand new member. Um, we also have two other members who are not here with us. Um, there is a member who will be by the name of Marilee Avila and Roz Zaccario Whitney. Um, so we're excited to be able to invite them. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how we'll be onboarding them um, in a moment. What meeting? What meeting? March 30th. I just found it. Sorry. Okay. Who's mm -hmm. leaving from the committee? So we are losing uh, Sarah Keene and Wade. That's Wade okay. Pillows. But the rest of us are all there next year, right? Yep. So we grew mm -hmm. the committee a little bit. Um, I think the the idea was that we wanted to have a few more hands on deck for next year. Great, great. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay, so next up is retreat planning. All right. So, um, and according to what we had heard back from the survey, which Brian, I'm sorry, I will send you the survey. Um, we heard that the best date, it seems like, for the most people to be able to attend the retreat is going to be Saturday, January 22nd. And um, from the looks of it, it looks like, especially with the Omicron variant coming up, um, we will be having a fully virtual meeting. So I'd like to have a little bit of a discussion about what we would like to see in that meeting, as well as um, you know some of the more logistical details of, um, do we prefer a morning, afternoon, evening meeting? How long do we feel like we should have? Um, so I'd like to give you guys a little bit of a chance of like, what, um, what have you seen work in the past for the retreat and what would you like to see as a part of this? Retreat? By the way, will Brian's vote change this in any way? I can make that date work. Great. So could someone give me a little concise, what happened at the last retreat? And what was good, what was so not as, as good about it? As an overview of what happened, um, we began just a, a quick get to know you thing, but it really wasn't anything substantial because that's weird on Zoom. And <laughs> And then um, we talked about what our goal is it, in broad strokes um, as, a, as a vision advisory committee. And then we talked a bit about, Sarah did a, a really good exercise um, where we talked about whether we wanted like an iterative process versus sort of a one shot at it, how important a number of different qualities were to us. Like for instance, getting um, the opinions of, of folks who are sort of traditionally marginalized populations um, whether we want to have a focus on certain issues, whether we want to have a survey where we spend more time going in depth with individuals versus breadth of individuals we cover, uh, all those sorts of things. And we ranked as a group, all those things one through 10, or rather individually one through 10, and then discussed why we felt where we did. And then we came down to um, our sort of group consensus as to what that should be. And I'm sure if I, if I looked, I could find those documents um, somewhere floating around my computer. And Mason, in, uh, sorry, Brian. In our OneNote, Nathan, there's a tab um, that says retreat. It has all of the notes and all of the stuff from the retreat, too. So you could also look at that. There you go. And then we also talked about um, specifically 
what we thought was an appropriate, after we discussed all those issues, we discussed what we thought was an appropriate timeline. And we actually had a pretty wide variance of opinions. Um, and then we settled on that year and a half being sort of a good balance of allowing us to have an iterative process where we go out to the community a couple of times, but also one where we can produce a, a product to the council that'll be relevant based on what we've actually, the data we've collect, collected. And I thought overall it went well, um, but it was like eight hours and that's too long on Zoom. <laughs> it wasn't eight hours, it was four hours. It felt like eight. We started in the well, morning and we ended the It felt like eight when I was doing the record, when I was doing the minutes, but it, oh, was, it was, it was four. Was it really only four? It was four hours. Jeez Louise. Well, that was a long time, I guess. Yeah, it was four hours. And you can, you can look at those minutes. They're pretty detailed. I, I remember you did a fantastic job. Uh, but so I think that's the gist of it. And then I'll leave it up to other folks to give their opinions uh, of what they think we should accomplish next year. I think one thing that would be helpful is, is uh, thinking like maybe our homework for this meeting is like thinking about what we do want to accomplish in those meetings. And I think uh, maybe at our January meeting, if we can like all commit to like doing some sort of prep work or planning or like having thought about whatever it is we're going to be talking about, uh, I think that will help it not feel like a, a an eight hour a day. Um, <laughs> So like if we can do any like if we can all agree that we should do any pre work that we can to become prepared I think that would help a lot I feel like especially on zoom that that tends to help move things along faster. Um, so I, I agree with Rachel and I think that having the are you going to be telling us like who's going to be on what subcommittees because it might be good for us to, as part of our homework, meet with whatever subcommittee that we're on and have each subcommittee kind of be able to present something during the retreat, or at least to lead some portion of the discussion as far as, um, you know, outreach or the partnerships or, you know, the marketing or you know, whatever, whatever it is their focus is, then that might help us to kind of break it up a little bit so that it's not just one person carrying all of the load, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, I had heard that last year, um, and I heard and I'd read in the notes that um, you guys had had separate parts of it that were basically a, kind of like assigned to different folks or that different folks were leading different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Is that true? So that's true. Yeah, there was uh, like Wade did an icebreaker, and then um, and then Sarah had done that activity, and then Brian was actually having us work on some of the presentation, like getting ready for that council presentation stuff, and the kind of overview of the visioning and what our responsibilities and our goals were. So I handled the boring parts that weren't games. <laughs> someone's got to do that job yeah that's what i'm best at <laughs> i was gonna say the lawyerly job yeah <laughs> well i think it would be super useful you know if we split it that way i think that would make sense with, amongst the three subcommittees each of the subcommittees has to come up with a list of either presentation or a, either a presentation a list of questions um some kind of activity to get everyone's minds thinking about that kind of topic. Um, and I, I, I can go ahead and I can give you guys the names of folks that have signed up for commission or for subcommittees. All right, I will send these out in an email as well. So if you uh, don't, you don't have to write them down necessarily. Um, so in the, in the marketing subcommittee, we're gonna have Cynthia, Suba and Jen. In the outreach subcommittee, we're going to have Amy, Christina, and Rachel. And then in the events subcommittee, we have the two Amandas, Amanda Hoffman and Amanda Clark. And then we have two folks, I believe, that are unassigned from subcommittees, Brian and Cameron. 
Do you guys have any preferences on the subcommittee that you'd be at? Since events only has two people and I'm, I'm happy to jump in there. And just as a reminder to myself, that's where we're gonna be planning events to, uh, as a, where outreach is going to folks who already have meetings and meeting them where they're at events and setting up events for people to come to us. Is that correct? correct? Yep. I'm happy. To, I'm yep. happy to do that. Yeah, I'd say that I think the purview has been setting up events and then participating some in like public events or something along those lines as well. And what will, what is the role of the event planning committee? So the event plan the events committee will be planning events. So if we have some kind of um, big group engagement later in the spring. <laughs> Or if we have, um, if we want to be able to plan participation in public events, that's what the event subcommittee will be doing. I can be part of this committee or the other committee which has a fewer members. Okay. We've got a 333 tie. Events would work fine, Cameron. Let's put you in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I will send out some. Scott, yeah. Scott, do you have a preference on where you would like to be? Uh, did I fill out? I thought I filled out the survey. Did you fill that out? I don't think I have a response from you, Scott. Maybe I just did it in my head and like ranked them in my head and then I didn't actually fill it out. Um, I, I don't know. I, so he'll I, quit right into marketing then. <laughs> I was going to say, we could use some outreach help to like. Yeah, actually. Outreach and partner. So. <laughs> let's do that. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Yes. We have Scott and Outreach, Cameron and Brian, and the events. Perfect. All right. So we, Shannon, do we have to have a public, like, do we have to do anything special if we want to hold meetings with these subcommittees? As long as we don't have a quorum, we don't need to post them. Um, but I will confirm that. That's my understanding, though. Okay. No, we well, had smaller groups meet in the past. How did you, did you guys just set up a Zoom meeting and do it, or how did that happen? I know, Rachel, you were in some. Yeah, so if it's a smaller subcommittee, like like Shannon said, like, as long as we don't have quorum, we don't need to do any public announcement or of the meeting or any other so you just Committee email stuff. each other and set up a Zoom meeting or something? Is that what you do? Yeah, did? I think we just literally just created a Zoom meeting. Okay. Yep. And did I can help you guys. Are... Did we decide oh. what would be the time slot for this? What time would meet? What time is the meeting? Time would help. Yeah. Do people prefer just a show of hands? Everyone know how to use the hand tool. Um, so I guess our big options would probably be morning, afternoon, or evening. I think we'll just start there. What are those hours though? If you want to give uh, Let's call it for no reason at all. Let's call it 10 o'clock AM, one o'clock PM and five o'clock or later. Does anyone have any strong feelings? So Brian says 10 AM. That's my preference, but I'm, yeah. 10 AM. Does anyone, highly opposed to 10 a.m. on the 22nd. I am not available to 11 there. That's, yeah, if you have to jump in or out, that's fine too. We'd love to see your faces there and get your participation as much as possible. But um, yeah, I think let's, let's try to shoot for 10 a.m. on the 22nd, unless there's anyone who has any strong feelings otherwise. We're just seeing. Okay, Jen will maybe not be available. Amy, do you want to type in the chat? I think we should do whatever time most are, yeah, most people are That's available. Right. Yeah, 1130 would work. And we can do lunch. People can bring their lunch. We can even send out Grubhub coupons or something. We'll try to see if we can get something like that. So you'll have food. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So did we change it to one then? What do you say? 11.30. 11.30 11, is what we're Yeah. And how long are you thinking? I'm thinking we'll need probably, I know four hours is a very long time. Maybe we could do three hours. Three and a half. 
yeah three and a half three hours and 59 minutes we'll do that just to, no let's do let's shoot for three hours so 11 30 to what is that 2 30 okay. oh and then we also obviously have on the fifth our regular meeting that month right yeah. so so then hopefully sometime between the fifth and the 22nd all of the individual groups can meet with also our two new members or is it three new members um, yeah how well, well christina do you need someone to meet with you well no no i don't mean individually <laughs> i mean we can add adding them into the uh to these subcommittees yes yeah well i think so for the january meeting um i had had a conversation with shannon about this i think what we're looking at the the meetings on january 5th um, we'll probably have a little bit different meeting since it's the first meeting of the year. We'll have new people involved. Big things we want to be able to do is we want to introduce the new members, get them assigned to subcommittees where that makes sense, um, do kind of a brief history of the visioning, and maybe you guys can provide some more history there. Um, and then we've got a couple big things in terms of electing a new chair. Um, so I think we would spend a little bit of time there. If you have, if anybody has any interest in being the chair, um, please let us know as soon as possible um, because we will be hosting the election on January 5th. Um, and then beyond that, I think we'll probably try to see if we can do some breakout rooms. And if you can't schedule a time elsewise, otherwise, um, you know, we should have a good 30, 40 minutes dedicated to doing planning for the, and we'll also need to elect a recorder. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so, so if anyone has interest in that as well, um, we don't want to just have to appoint the last one <laughs> again. So, um, so yeah, so we will need folks to step up and do those, those pieces of work as well. So be thinking about that um, if you have any kind of interest in um, picking up your responsibility a little bit. Do our bylaws allow those currently serving chair, recorder, et cetera, to get reappointed? Was it something asked by Jen? Um, and co-chair yeah do, i guess we'll have to decide if we want to co-chair or not i think that was useful last year um so i think that'd be worthwhile for us to be able to do and um yeah there's there's no term on this, on this thing so um so brian could rule magnanimously forever i guess but um he does not want that he is very opposed to that so we're not going to make him do that we're not going to make christina be the recorder forever <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but okay so that that looks i think so we'll do um january the 22nd from 11 30 to 2 30 i'll get an invite sent out to everyone um i think we'll try to get a little care package out to everyone as well for that time um just so you know we can make that three hours as enjoyable as possible um as it can be um i think along with that we'll probably have I'll set up more of a clear homework assignment for each of our committees to pull together their presentation activity, whatnot. Um, but we're probably going to be looking at about probably 30 minute time slots for each of those groups. Um, other ideas that we've floated for the retreat that I'd love to hear your feedback on. We've considered getting maybe a guest speaker in. Um, I don't know if that'd be useful or not for you. Maybe someone like Adelante Mujeres, someone who's been doing outreach in the community to be able to talk a little bit more about how you can do that effectively. Um, or other ideas have included just, you know, including a little bit more time to, to have a little bit of fun and interest, um, as well as, you know, and doing some team building activities too. I think it's, it's hard since we've been meeting virtually over the past year and we'll be meeting virtually again. It'd be nice to have everyone kind of know each other a little bit better. <laughs> so um, so I'd, be, I'd love to hear any of your takes on that, um, either now or later. So that is going to be in person meeting then? On no, we'll be we'll be virtual. We'll be virtual. We decided um, that'll be the safest, particularly with the new COVID variants and um, just all the other logistics of finding an actual physical place. So. I would definitely be interested in hearing from someone who's been doing outreach in the community. Um, the per the other person who came to mind was. Um, Councilor Hartmeyer Prigg, since I know she helped lead visioning for THPRD. Okay, yeah. If you have, yeah, if you have any other ideas of who we'd like to see, that's that's a good one. Um, 
we'll, we'll probably just do some general outreach, go through some of these one by one, see if anybody would have interest in coming in on a Saturday to give a 30 minute talk. But, um, but we'd love to be able to, you know, glean some things from some folks who have been doing this work already. I would like to, if it's possible, um, I guess after we see this next council meeting, that'll probably tell us a bit more, establish a fairly firm timeline and, and uh, maybe it's the year, maybe it's 18 months, whatever it is, and, and really populate it in a detailed way in terms of we got to have an event here. We want to have outreach to this many groups or to these particular groups by this time. We want to have our first, our first, you know, uh, reach outreach campaign or, or whatever it's going to be done here um, to give us good waypoints and goalposts. Because otherwise, I mean, there's so much we can think about and talk about with this every month that it'd be easy to let everything slip by that we have to actually accomplish. And I, I think it'll help keep us accountable to ourselves. It's nice to get to a point in a committee like this to where the point where you're just checking in to see if work is done or not. And, right. then, and then I, I would love to be able to spend the last half hour of each of our meetings in like a breakout room where each of our groups is doing some planning and talking or something like that. So um, I agree, Brian, we'll see that. I think that'd be a good exercise for us to do. Any other thoughts on what you'd like to see or things you've enjoyed and other kinds of retreats that you've been a part of. How's the staff person in Washington County? Do you know the name of that aim of that person, Amy? You don't have to, if you don't know it now, you can send it later, but um, that that'd be great. Thank you, Amy. Cool. All right, well, Nathan, I think you kind of have the rest of the agenda here. So I'll let <laughs> right. you take over, but we've got, you know, marketing updates, uh, outreach updates, and then breakouts, and that's it. Yeah, so we're going to go a little off script. I started planning the presentation today, and I realized, like, oh, I've got a ton to talk about in terms of marketing. I think we're going to have to have a lot of discussion around that, and a lot of the other stuff can probably wait till later. So. The bulk of what we're gonna do now, we'll talk about marketing. We may get done a little bit early. If we get done with that, then that's perfectly fine. Um, but um, we'll, we'll start with a little bit of a marketing discussion. So let's see if I can share my screen. So I wanted to just show everyone because I was very proud of what I found on uh, as like a template. Um, the cool like graphics you can have for PowerPoint. Like look at this little cabin and snow thing. It's it's very cool. I was I was very excited to find that. I'm not going to use it today, but um, it's very very proud of that. Um, <laughs> anywho, um, in terms of marketing, <laughs> so here's kind of I I had. Um, Beaverton's in-house marketing person, Nicole, um, put together a little bit of a sample marketing plan. This is kind of a draft, something to kind of throw on paper. Um, just kind of going over, you know, what you would like to see in a very general marketing plan. So the big purpose being, you know, we want to be able to gather input from the Beaverton community um, so we can develop a community vision. And we particularly want to reach out to underrepresented individuals. Um, for our goal, she marked it down as we want to have at least a thousand responses. I would hope we would get a lot more than that, but um, we want to get over a thousand responses that are representative of Beaverton's population as a whole. And to do that, we're going to need to um, rely on a lot of um, marketing from the city of Beaverton using advertisements, editorial co content, um, social media, as well as other more direct marketing like posters, aprons, you know, and postcards. And additionally, on top of that, we're going to be using some of our other outreach methods, um, like focus group and working with our community partners to be able to get um, whatever survey we develop, whatever tools we develop to be able to collect public opinion out there. Um, so generally speaking, this is what our marketing plan is. We can write in some of the details later, but this is, this is what we're looking at. And so the exciting news that I can say is that there's a designer that um, we are hoping to work with. I have probably said this a little too concretely, but the designer is, is more than likely going to be Iron Canvas Studios, um, who is based out of Beaverton. Um, it's a 
um, wife and husband couple. I think the wife is the owner of the business who um, has worked with Beaverton a lot in the past um, with some of the various um, initiatives that the city has done with Dining Month, has worked with the city on um, some of its summer events um, with, um, I believe, like a housing initiative as well as some others. And generally our timeline for working with the designer is we needed to determine our marketing needs over the next month so that the iron canvas can prepare the materials and go back and forth with us on the details of the materials in January. So we can be ready to hit the ground running come February or March. Um, so that's generally what our timeline is going to look like for working with this designer um, right off the bat. And kind of across the board, the types of media that um, this person has worked with has kind of ranged from flyers, social media work, um, specific paper handouts, um, posters and banners, postcards, and uh, as well as website materials. And some of the examples of the work, I'll just kind of show you these one by one. Um, for Beaverton Restaurant Week, this is kind of what the look of what she had done had been. For them, it was primarily a lot of website images um, as well as social media posts, and then actual posters that could be put into restaurants. Um, For the Beaverton Housing Project, it, there was a lot of stuff around both Instagram and social media to be able to get, um, I believe it was also input for a survey, as well as brochures and an actual final document. So they, they actually helped work with um, the final, final report that they had come up with as well. Um, but, you know, kind of fairly, fairly professional looking graphics. but also kind of had some range and had put up banners, postcards, and has done other kinds of things for Beaverton events. Um, again, I think the big point with having a graphic designer like this is that you get a common theme throughout the entire process. Um, so that, that's what we would also be wanting to look for is that you know, we wanna be able to figure out what types of media we want to use, but making sure that whatever media that we have um, all matches up and according to a, a report. And yeah, so they, they have even extended to merch to a certain extent. Um, so they've had flyers, but they've also created like t-shirts and tote bags and other kinds of things um, that may be useful for us. Um, we've got a decent sized budget to be able to get the, the word out there and let people know that something like visioning is happening. So we should be as creative as we possibly can on the types of materials that we'd like to use. And so what I'd like to spend a little bit more time on is coming to some decision points um, in terms of what kinds of communication do we think are important? What types of communication would we be comfortable getting out there? Um, what's our interaction with the public going to look like? I know um, with past visionings, it's been a lot of this in-person piece that we've been able to get out there, get out with clipboards, wear t-shirts, let people know we're involved with the visioning. And um, I think there's a little bit of fear whether or not we're gonna be able to do that or not. And so we, um, so the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to do a little bit of an activity and I'm gonna put a link in the chat here in a second. Okay, so again, we're going to be using Jamboard. I hope that's all right. I hope everyone has the ability to use Jamboard. Um, please let me know if that's not going to work for you and I can, I can share my screen and we can do things verbally. But we're going to be playing a little bit of a game of if you had, if we all had marketing dollars, which we do, where would you spend your marketing dollars? And before we get started, I have some boxes with some different types of media. But I'd like to hear, are there other types of media that I'm overlooking? Because I'm sure I am, that you would like to see. Um, I don't know if this exactly falls into media, but one of the things we had talked about potentially wanting to do is like to incentivize people 
to respond with like gift cards like you know if you if you respond like you get entered in for like a gift card to like a local business um and I'm wondering if like that would be a place where we can like the, is that part of marketing or is that something else that might be mar more of outreach I don't necessarily know okay. if I would see that as marketing but I, okay. I like the idea I think that is something we we will be doing <laughs> perfect yeah <laughs> okay so the whole idea behind marketing is to basically to spread the message that there is this um, survey uh, or, or information that we are trying to gather that, um, oh, okay, I'm just getting this thing this. Um, the information that we're gonna gather from, from a, a person or, a, yeah, I guess probably from an individual um, to, um, give us input on what they feel is important for the city in a um, in a like a five year time frame like what they see are the most important issues right so the, like th their sense is we are trying to these are all the things that we're trying to get people to see and say hey there is this committee that's uh, requiring this information that I need to think about and then give them this um, my thoughts on this Right, that's that's the basic idea. That's what we are marketing, right? Yeah, the idea exactly. The idea is we need people to be able to either respond to surveys. We're going to have like you know maybe comment boxes that people can fill out. We need people to be able to quickly and easily know that this is going on and that they the visioning is going on and they can participate via more than likely a survey or a focus group along those lines. And so you know. We can put that information up on a banner. We can put that on posters. We can put that on the back of a bus or a billboard or something along those lines. And um, you know, it's going to be a combination of like, what do we think is going to be most effective with the communities we would like to reach? What's going to be effective for getting the community at large involved? Um, and yeah, what, what do we believe will actually get people to know that this is going on and want to participate? And so there's things left that I didn't put on here that, you know, potentially we might consider, like maybe we consider doing videos. Maybe we do, we talk to TriMet and see if we can get a little thing put on each and every train that goes by or something like that. Um, are, are there any things that people feel passionate about that we, we should be having on here? But this is not the point of them giving the information. This is just telling them that there'll be some, some place or some forum or some way we'd be requiring information from them as in like this won't have qr codes or or links that'll lead send them to a survey not all of these things right oh it certainly could they certainly could have a qr code i don't know how effective qr codes are sometimes they can be very effective if you position them right and, you know put them in the right spots of the right crowds um but it definitely could be that could be a part of the you know if we decide posters is the way to go we're gonna put a poster at every restaurant in beaverton and they're all going to have the qr code to our survey um that could be the way we do it and i see jen entered and some things here um about video ads and signs at bus stops i'd like to hear from scott some of his ideas about places that we should be to be getting um the perspective of young people in our community especially right now given some of the limitations of being in schools and not being able to go and, you know. Yeah. Um, be in there. <laughs> well, I think this kind of goes without saying, but the internet is obviously like how most of us get information. And um, I think that's probably gonna be most effective like through social media platforms and things. And then also going into um, like places like schools or just places where certain demographics congregate. Mm -hmm. um, so is it Instagram that people are mostly using for um, eight younger? Yeah, Instagram is a big one and Snapchat and then um, like YouTube and TikTok. And those are kind of harder to adapt something like this too, but um, I think a lot of people are on those. Yeah. Brian, come up with a visioning committee this. dance for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I don't. That would be more cringe than uh, getting the message across, though. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Amanda has a good question. Does the social media dollars include paid in addition to organic? Um, I would guess what social media would more than likely use. Um, it, well, in terms of the graphic designer, I think it's going to be developing content um, for social media rather than necessarily the distribution of, um, which I think there's, there's a distinction there. Um, yeah. My yeah. question was, um, if I'm voting dollars into social media, was that going towards like creating content that will be organically posted or, or I don't even know if governmental organizations are allowed to do paid advertising because you can get really highly targeted with people that you want to reach with specific types of messages through social media marketing. Um, and if like voting in that area would be part of that, or is it just, oh, you guys can do paid ads. Okay. I wasn't sure because yeah. that can be super highly effective. And to answer Amy's question, yes, we will, we'll do a secondary, we'll do further questions down the line about um, what, what will actually be on the marketing materials themselves. I think first we'll start with how, how should we be talking to people first? Like what, what are the best ways to be able to get our message out? And um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get started then. If, unless anyone else has any other specific ways that we could be getting information out to folks, you should all have $5 in your little wallets over there um, and distribute your $5 in any way that you see fit. We're paying I Iron Canvas Studios to do things for us. Where should the focus be? Direct mailers, Amy. Yeah, I, I had that kind of under postcards, but do you, do you see that as different? We can combine the two. Direct mail can be really expensive because the postage that postage actually ends up being more expensive than printing the materials that get mailed. So it would eat quite a bit to mail it to every home, but it would at least get into the home. Is bulk mailing is cheaper than direct mailer? If the city has a permit number, they might be able to get a, depending on the size, they could probably get a, a cheaper rate than the regular rate. Well, they might even be able to put a cardboard postcard in the regular city update, right? And right. So that wouldn't be an additional mailing cost. That right. Point. That would be good. That's a great idea. And he has a good point that we will be doing our the our city page um, regardless. So yeah, some of these are no, we're going to need things like we are going to need content for our websites. We will want some level of social media um, work. As you see, the dollars get stretched all the way across the board here. Um, and so so yeah, there may be creative ways to be able to combine strategies or utilize strategies that are already used. Brochures are mailed, right? And flyers are handed out at some place. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of that. I think that distinction, I think that's why that distinction was made is that um, handouts, brochures, flyers, those things we would be things that we'd be physically giving out at okay. say our okay. events okay. that we are going to be hosting or participating in. Um, All right, I see a couple people have completely spent their money. Scott, you are still questioning. What What are you thinking? Well, I'm actually not, but the the gym board is just like being really slow, and it's fine. Oh shoot! Anyway, okay, are you... <laughs> move the money. So, so where did you put your money? I think I had. Um... Two in social media, one in website, and then one in like mailed literature, and then one in banners. Okay. Any reasoning behind that? Um, well, I find things in the mail to be pretty effective. Um, I know that, like that doesn't go for everybody because not everybody checks their mailbox every day, but um, like I know for my family, things that come in the mail. Is, is pretty effective. And then 
I kind of explained social media before and, and website goes along with that. And then also like when I'm driving and I see a banner, I don't know, like personal experience. I just think that like, I noticed that. I appreciate that you highlighted the two things that weren't online. So we want to just have the stereotype of you spent $5 on social media or something like that. <laughs> so thank, thank you for that. Um, Rachel, where'd you put your money? Um, I think I split mine between social media, website, handouts. Oh, I think I put it in postcards and then video ads. I, w I feel like, I feel like a video ad could potentially be like so expensive that it's not worth doing, but I would be curious to see. I, it's kind of a, a question of like, how far will those dollars go, right? Um, I think it could be cool, but maybe not like as, as ex not, not cool enough to, to justify the expense potentially. Yeah, I think that's, that's a lot of what we've heard back from our marketing team regarding video in particular. Like it can be really cool if it's done well, but it can also be very expensive and not necessarily get the message out where you need it to go. Let's see, Christina, where didn't you put your money? Where didn't I? Well, I couldn't yeah. get in Jamboard, so. Oh um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy to use my phone and then I have my computer, so I, I'm logged on through the minutes, but um, I wasn't able to, to open it on my laptop. Um, so uh, I'm, I can see everybody on my laptop because I went through the agenda and then, but I'm working through my phone right now. So um, I do think that on social media, videos go a lot farther than like it, it has a really good reach. That's what we've seen in our analytics for my job is that people do respond to pictures and video, video more than pictures. Um, and so it might, this might be an opportunity for us to maybe reach out to the Arts and Communication Magnet Academy and see if they have a video program and maybe partner with some of the student artists that might be interested in helping us to put it, put something together as far as a marketing, like putting something together cheaply, but um, also giving them something that, that they can then have in their portfolio. So just an idea that sometimes we've got a lot of great content creators out in our community who that's their, YouTube and and Instagram and Snapchat are their jam and that's what they do and what they love doing so um, yeah so I can see Scott putting in there <laughs> but we've got great talent in our community that if we put it out there that we're looking for something and maybe we do a competition we might be able to save some money but then also get really good content that we can share that can really reach out to some different de demographics than we've reached before. So that's just an idea for it because I do know that um, video on social media is the most effective. Um, so I would say that I would, I would split my money between the, um, the social media and the website. I like the idea of the banners. Um, if we can get, if we can just insert a flyer within um, an already happening mailer that the city's doing and save money there, um, I think that, that that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think we need to have some some things, some some physical things out in the community. So if it's banners across um, Canyon or you know in the in the Main Street area kind of like where we've hung the Christmas lights and things for the holidays. Um, if we can string some things there, that that would be a visual place over by the library. Um, maybe some A-frames set up in different places that we can move around to different mm -hmm. neighborhoods, especially as we're doing, especially as we're gonna maybe have opportunities where we can be in person, like in the spring and in the summer to maybe pull them over to the park or partner with the THPRD if they're gonna do any concerts or anything. 
I really like this idea of being able to piggyback on what's already being done. And I think as part of our marketing strategy, that's going to be a, a key aspect of it. Um, that's where those partnerships like, are going to be like really important. Mm-hmm. And flushing out what that means. Have flyer, yeah, if we can have flyers at all of the THPRD facilities, if we can get on the Beaverton School District's appro- approved flyer list so that they're going there. And those would be like, they they have like things that you can post in schools. And then they also have the electronic newsletters that go out to people. So if we can get into some of those places that we know really saturate the community and hit a lot of target audiences, that would be great. Good deal. All right. Any other thoughts on what we should be doing or where we should be spending our money when we go to our graphic designer and say, hey, we would like to produce X, Y, and Z? I kind of echo with the, uh, Scott. I think banners uh, play a very big role. When I am driving or walking, banner grabs a lot of attention. So I, my personal thought is banner should be given a little bit more edge, maybe $2, I, I put $2 towards the banner. I would like to see something um, that we can give to local businesses, especially you know restaurants and, and retail to have customers coming in and out that they can put on their front counters or places um, to involve them in this process. So when people are placing their orders or, or checking out at the register, they can, they have at least one contact with that there. And if you combine that with having a banner and having a good social media presence, if we can touch it, people at least like four or five times over the course of the next several months, and I think that really increases the likelihood they participate. I think this is really good feedback, you guys. I think um, this is something that we can easily take to our designer and say that um, we are generally interested in these kinds of outreach methods. That'll give her enough room to be able to run with it. So I I appreciate you guys kind of going through this activity. Um, The next activity will be a little bit more open and a little bit more free. Um, Go to page two of the Jamboard for those that are on the Jamboard. For those that can't access the Jamboard, feel free to put your thoughts in chat. Um, I think that'll work equally well. Um, So on page two, we have some of the samples from um, what we saw from Iron Canvas. And I just kind of want to generally know, like, what do you like about these samples? And then also, like, what would you like, what are characteristics or adjectives that you would like to see um, when, when we create some kind of visioning marketing material? Can you share your screen so that- I can, yes, that would make your life easier. (laughs) Yeah, thanks. Sorry about that, Christina. That's okay, not your, you're good. (laughs) I promoted you to panelist, Christina, so you might be able to use that link now. Okay, let me try. So sort of an, an initial thought, I like the restaurant we posted the best and the housing options one the least. Um, I think the having the photos create a lot of interest and I think it's nice, it's good to have that because everything else, Beaverton does a really good job of um, promoting a whole lot of things and all those things look sort of like the housing options poster. And so I think having a photo like the restaurant week, or even the the bike and celebration parades where there's a photo off to the side, make it stand out as something different than what's already been up and posted and people will see. I'm seeing in the chat, um, Rachel likes the bike Beaverton and parade ones. What do you like about those? Is that Rachel? Sorry about that. Um, I like, I like the, I think the like color uh, partly really catches my eye. Um, Like a solid color with just like a small bit of text and like a clear like date or like, which is like kind of your call to action. Um, 
I also, I also really, I, I would say like my second place one is Beaverton Restaurant Week. Uh, maybe I just like circles. I don't know. Um, but I think like just very like clear. I like, I like that the bike Beaverton one is like extremely clear in like what it's talking about. It has like the information you need, like very simply put. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of we like circles, which I I, like, I agree. I, I like a circle. Yeah, I was just gonna say like like Rachel, I think it's I like the uh, bike Beaverton and the celebration parade and the restaurant week. Those are the best, but I think it's it's the combination of kind of bright, cheery colors and simple patterns and some movement and simple text. It's easy to easy to read. Looks a little unified. So kind of fits into the, the city's theme, um, but it's friendly and easy to communicate. If you have ideas of what you would want photos of, that would be helpful too. Yeah. So I don't know who wrote that circles draw eye, but do you want to draw an eye to look like a vision thing with an eye? Or would that be too scary? <laughs> On the, um, I know people are kind of dissing the housing thing, but I think that shape kind of goes with the shape of a house. And so I think that that was appropriate for that. That's a good question though, Suba. Um, we're doing a community visioning. Is there any community visioning? What comes to mind when you think of a community vision that might be something we'd want to include in marketing materials? Soup, Shannon, that's exactly what I was thinking. Suba's mention of eyes made me think about, uh, made me see in my mind like glasses where it's like blurry around, but everything that's like seen through the lenses is very sharp. Whatever whatever we're seeing through there is, is our like community vision. Yeah, or binoculars. All right, so we dislike, we like eyeglasses. I like that idea, especially. Could, could you write, Jen, are you able to access the dashboard or could you put a post-it note? I like that idea of like the clear and then the fuzzy. Um, and then I like the comment that says that small text is not great, which is ironic because it is also a very small text, but um, binoculars. Yeah, I like, the, is, I like the ideas of the binoculars too because that, that does give even more depth. I think a big image that a lot of times comes with these visions are things of like the future. So things like sunrises and um, mostly sunrises <laughs> are the things that I, I've also seen used a lot. Um, happy children. Other, happy children. Mm -hmm. Like the song goes, children over future. Yeah, I like the idea of having people in it because that's really like who we're reaching out to and the people that are living in our community now and will be in the future. Um, you, be, They probably want to see themselves in the types of imagery that we're using and know that this visioning process is for them. And so having diversity reflected in the imagery is also really important. Ooh, who brought a photo in? Pulled it off the city's website. Nice. <laughs> it's got a lot of color. I was, okay. I, something in the daytime would be better though, because it'd be brighter. I can't make it smaller though, so I'll just delete it. So I don't want to get too much into this because I feel like this is a conversation that would last a good half hour and I want the marketing team to have things to do. Um, but what are kinds of sayings or like phrases that come to mind that you think would be useful for um, getting the vision forward? I think it's important to say we want to hear from you or we want your ideas. Or we need we need your input, you know, or we need you. How you see Beaverton. 
like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Amy, are there particular things that come to your mind? Oh, you've been writing on. Okay, thank you for doing that. Got some. Well, this is kind of a fun exercise. Um, I, I appreciate you guys taking ten minutes to do this. I feel you, you feel free to add more on as you'd like. I know we're kind of coming up against our time, um, but I, I figured it would be good to be able to kind of collect some of this input on what we'd like to see in some of our marketing pieces. Um, so let's take a couple more minutes and we can kind of just think through some some other ideas that we'd like to see in there. You, you know, how about this? Beaverton want your ideas instead of we want your ideas. And I think I think people have said this, but the Beaverton color scheme of orange and blue that works for people. Yeah, those are complementary colors. I like that. Any final thoughts or anything that you really need to see in here for this to, to work? I think the goal is we create we create a template, we create something that's going to be able to stay with us throughout the entirety of this process. That in our final report, it's going to have some of this imagery as well as when we do our initial outreach, it's going to have some of this imagery. Mm -hmm. One thing when you're talking with the marketing person, when they're talking about social media, can you talk to them about having moving graphics? or like having some kind of interactability so that they can people can scroll through different images like if they want to have multiple images or, more, or multiple messages on different images yeah definitely i think that's a great idea i think that's something that would catch the eye um, rather than being completely static on a medium where you can have a little <laughs> bit more wiggle, wiggle room yeah yeah absolutely and Jen's letting us know that we will be required to use the Beaverton brand palette. So that's that's good that we we all we all like it. So <laughs> thank you, Jen. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, that that's pretty much the bulk of what I have for you all today. If you have other thoughts, I'm going to leave the Jamboard open for the rest of the night. So please feel free to add things as you think of them, or if you want to move your dollars around, feel free to do that as well. Um, We've got a lot of jobs in terms of messaging and what we want to be able to put, be putting on some of our messaging or marketing materials. But I think this gives us uh, some good input for our designer on what we'd like to see. So with that, I will hand it back, I think, to Brian. So I think that pretty much does it. So Nathan, is there, what do you need from us between now and the January meeting? Yes, that's a good one. So I think what I will be doing is I will be sending out um, an email with this presentation and um, I will kind of confer, I will confirm the, um, the date and time for our retreat. I will be sending out a finalized list of each of our committees, our subcommittees. And um, I think hopefully by the end of next week, I'll have a list of questions or kind of prompts for you all so that you can meet um, if you can meet before the January meeting, I think that'd be great. Otherwise, I think it's fine if we wait until a little bit later in January. I, I want to save some room within the January meeting for our subcommittees to meet and talk about what we'd like to see in the retreat. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have a lot for you all to do right now, um, but I'll get you all that information. And um, other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Um,
So I know it's Hanukkah right now. So happy Hanukkah. I don't remember what night it is. But. It's the fourth night. Fourth night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> great to see all of your faces thank you so much for your participation this year and um in this committee i'm really excited for the work that we're going to be able to do next year nathan did you want to be meeting with the subcommittees when we meet or do you just see me in the yeah cc me in the emails um I'll, I'll give you a little bit more instructions um i don't have to be there if you guys want to go ahead and meet and in fact i probably would prefer not to so i can save my time but um you can at least let me know that the conversation is going on so I know that things are moving forward. Okay. All right. Well, anyone have anything else for the, the good of the order? Okay. Well, Nathan, thank you very much, too. Uh, everything you've done has been very helpful in moving us forward. So thanks for that. And I'll see you all next year, if not before, in our, our small groups. All right. See you all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Janet, can you send me the chat, please?